Thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks for uh, the invitation. Um, I'm representing Enable, uh, which is a group of volunteers all over the globe using 3D printing to make uh, prosthetics. So this is a 3D printer. This is kind of a nifty little one. Lots of people are getting 3D printers uh, in their homes, in maker spaces, libraries, etc. And it's a terrific thing because anything you can imagine you can make, and the question is, what are you, what are you gonna do with it? And for me, um, I really like being able to help people, and being able to 3D print prosthetics is a great opportunity to do that. Commercial prosthetics are terrific, but it's five to $10,000 for hand prosthetic, um, because they're very expensive, custom engineered things. But it turns out 3D printers make stuff really cheap, and it's easy to make it custom. Uh, so it's more like, 50 bucks by the time you add padding and Velcro and so on instead of five or $10,000. So that makes a huge difference. So Enable has got a lot of people very excited about this opportunity. So we have over 7,000 members all over the planet. Uh, you can see the map uh, and lots and lots of recipients, happy kids. The kinds of people that are involved in Enable, I'll talk about roles a little bit and they'll show a few videos that are a lot cooler than I am. Because uh, I'm, I'm a software guy, I don't make great video. Uh, so the recipients are the most important. They're the people that get these hands and use them, and uh, it lets them have a fu you know function, carry stuff with both hands, um, and so on. Uh, there are fabricators who are the volunteers who make these things. So people all over the planet, uh, and I'll have some examples. There are the designers. Uh, Ivan was Ivan Owen was the designer of the first one. I'm not going to play that, that video, but he, he gave a really nice TED presentation uh, a year or two ago that, uh, that tells the whole story. So there'll be a link on the, uh, the deck when that's circulated. Um, and there are a ton of designers. I don't want to name them all because I'll forget too many. And then there's a facilitation team, the organizational support team that runs something called Enable Matcher. And what Enable Matcher does is anybody who wants to volunteer to help people or who needs a hand registers in and we match them up. So. Uh, if you're in uh, Tampa and you say, I need a hand, uh, we'll say, great. Well, we know people in Tampa. Let's introduce you to each other so you can help each other out. And then we facilitate the whole process, provide all the designs. Everything's open source and free. This is a hand design called the Osprey that the way the, the, uh, the hands tend to work, this is a mechanical design. It's just by somebody bending their wrist and it makes the, the grip open and close. So if you guys can see how that works. So it's a simple push-pull mechanism uh, that was actually invented by an artillery engineer, I think in the 1800s, who blew one of his hands apart. And being an engineer, he came up with a solution. Of course, that involved metal and wood and carving and welding and things like that. And now 3D printers make that a lot easier. Uh, but essentially, it's a very simple mechanical design, so no patents, yay. And, um, and so it's very easy to produce. Uh, and quite effective. So actually, let me pass that around so everybody can kind of get a feel of it. Uh, it'd be pretty hard to break, so don't worry about it. Tori, this is a robotic hand. Yeah, I assemble the hands. You kind of put the fingers together and just snap the pins in. This is made out of 3D printed plastic. 3D printed plastic. Yeah. Say that three times fast. <laughs> These are meant for kids who don't have any fingers uh -huh. so that they can still um, use their hand. The little boys or the little girls are so excited because they can have their superhero hand. If I were to ask you if you could be a superhero, and you could be any superhero, and you could have any superpower, what would you say? I wouldn't have any power because I already have the power of imagination and the power of thoughts. The only limit is your imagination. <laughs> Just gonna go down here. We're looking for nine one two.
Hey Alex, how are you? Pleasure to meet you. I have another bionics expert on hand, so I thought I'd drop by. Thank you. Yes, yeah, a pleasure. Nice bow tie, by the way. Thanks. How are your travels? It's very good. Well, I thought I'd bring uh, one of my gauntlets and match it up with yours and uh, see if everything's copacetic. You want to have a look? Sure. Ready? Yep. Great. Each one looks the same. Actually, I think yours might be better than mine. What do you say we, uh, we both try them on, do a progress report? Okay. You know who that is? Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Robert. Great. God, dude, it's even cooler than I thought. <clears throat> I'm having a technical glitch. Um, as you can see, my light isn't working. Half the time, you know, I design one of these, it winds up breaking on me. Yeah. But what I do is I keep working on it, kind of like you're working on it with Albert. He keeps working and working until he gets it right. Yeah, I think yours is still a little bit more right than mine because at least, you know. The lights work. Your light works, yeah. Ah, oh, look at that, Dan. It's a marriage of robotic technologies. Bang, nailed it. Love it. Hey, good job, Albert. Thank you, sir. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> Albert has made it so affordable. I'm probably gonna start farming out a lot of my tech work to Albert, too. I feel like he could cut the price point down on one of my suits, which right now is, I guess, about, I don't know, a billion and a half dollars. So, a group that I really wanna point out is Handling the Future, started by Richard Brown, a uh, doctor in Valencia Lakes that actually started a club raising money, doing fundraisers, buying a printer, and printing them for people in this area. And I think that's super awesome. So if you want to help them with your time or donations, or if you know somebody who needs help, please reach out to handlingthefuture at gmail.com. One of the things that's happened is because it's an open, uh, an open source project, there's amazing creativity unleashed. So this is a map of what happened really over the first two, three years. Um, and so there's actually been a lot even since then with all these different designs, with different designers having different insights or coming up with, for example, somebody who's missing fingers, they have a thumb, they don't have a thumb, partial arm, partial arm up here, and so on. And all these amazing designs popping up with incredible creativity um, and, and huge innovation, tremendously valuable. Uh, but that creates a challenge. And the challenge is there's a zillion options. Good Lord, how do you pick from it? And when you're talking about, for example, a kid's parents buying a 3D printer, they've never printed before, they've never designed anything before, how on earth do they tackle that? Uh, so we came up with a tool called Handomatic, uh, which I, I led the team to build, which uh, kind of walks you through the process. Sort of a wizard helping you pick your options um, and, uh, and help you through things. And of course, um, so it starts out, it's a website, and if you go to enablingthefuture.org, get a link to Handomatic. Uh, so I'll just say enablingthefuture.org a bunch of times. And so, um, for first page, it explains the process a little bit. You know, you pick your model, you enter some measurements, you pick some options, and it gives you some files to print. Uh, and of course, there's a disclaimer bit, because lawyers. In this case, there's two designs wired in there, one called the Raptor Hand and one called Cyborg Beast. Uh, developed by two different teams inside Enable. Um, and when you, you can read about them, it links to more information. When you pick sort of which style you like, um, then it says, okay, do you need a left or right hand? Left hand, okay. How big is your knuckles? We played around with lots of different uh, algorithms around what measurements you would need. And it turned out really kind of sizing the hand, just the knuckle measurement, we could get it as simple as possible. Because we really want to keep it uh, if you take lots of measurements, it tends to uh, scare people a little bit. So, uh, so to automate it, we made it just the knuckle width. And then it goes to a screen where you can pick a few options. So for example, do you want the hand uh, with no thumb, meaning you've got a thumb and it should have a cutout so that uh, your thumb sticks out? Or you don't have a thumb, so you need uh, the printed thumb. Uh, and things like that. And same thing on the the gauntlet we call this part on the arm. Maybe it goes straight, maybe you have a little more muscle mass and it widens out. Um, and so you pick those sort of options. 
Uh, you can see exactly what you're going to get when you change the options. Everything updates in real time. Uh, and then, uh, then you put in your email address, hit a button, and it says, OK, great. And it says, click here to download the files, and it sends you an email. So you just get a set of files that you can print if you've got a 3D printer. And we also send you an email uh, that you can, again, print. It gives you all the information, all the details. You can send it to your local library if they're as cool as this one and they got a 3D printer. Um, and, and there are more and more libraries doing these sort of things. Makerspaces, friend with a printer, et cetera, and, and they'll take care of you. And of course, there's a link to the Enable Matcher. So if you want us to find somebody to help you out, uh, we can do that too. Um, and a, an important part around the fact that it's 3D printed is if, if something breaks, you just print it again, right? So instead of having to have a $10,000 titanium thing, you have a 50 cent plastic thing. Uh, so replacements and, and repairs are just pull the email down, print the part. So uh, that's kind of who we are, enablingthefuture.org. We have a few things going on that I want to tell people about. One is the Enable Educators Exchange. Uh, the Educators Exchange is an open source curriculum around uh, this project because a, a lot of schools picked this, uh, picked uh, Enable as a really good focus for STEM projects and classes. So quite a few schools have taught classes or you know, like a chunk of their curriculum, not of course the whole school year, but they'll spend a couple of days getting the kids learning about it, learning about the engineering, learning about the software, learning about how to design things, maybe printing a hand for a kid in the class or somebody in the community, and that turns out to be hugely effective engaging uh, the kids. Uh, in particular, uh, attracting uh, girls into STEM, uh, what I've been told is that the retention rates uh, using this as the, as the project are very high, whereas kind of standard engineering exercises, the guys are interested in, the girls aren't. So, uh, and anything that kind of helps get girls into STEM, big fan. Um, and then uh, the other thing I want to tell you about is uh, the second annual Enable Convention. There was one last year in Baltimore, and this year there's one at the University of Washington in October. Uh, there are volunteers printing over uh, a thousand hands that are being donated. Um, there are workshops, trainings, fittings, lectures, uh, all sorts of amazing stuff going on. And so if you're interested in this, that's a really great way to, to get engaged in it. And um, I guess what I'm, my asks would be, if you know anybody who uh, needs a hand, uh, or if you ever meet anybody, please tell them about enablingthefuture.org so that we can help them out. We have over 7,000, I think actually it might be around 9,000 now, it keeps going up. Uh, volunteers registered and they're just looking for people to help. And if you've got a 3D printer, you meet somebody with a 3D printer, tell them about it because we love to have more people involved. Uh, or if you want to donate money or your time and skills, please help too. We have a lot of people who are helping in the, or what's called the organizational support team. So, you know, they're not CAD designers and they don't have 3D printers, but uh, maybe they know marketing, maybe they know how to do great PR, maybe they can just organize stuff. They can help the whole coordination effort because when you have thousands of people getting hooked up to each other, it's a big coordination. The last thing I'd say is if, if you're a teacher or you could suggest it to a teacher, joining the Enable Educators Exchange would be really awesome because uh, I think exposing kids to this is highly motivating. <laughs> So inside the United States, most adults are covered by some kind of insurance for prosthetics. Kids are not because the insurance companies don't spend $10,000 every six months as the kid grows. So essentially, the kid grows up not building up any muscle strength. So uh, a university did a research study with these hands uh, last year. They gave 10 kids hands and 10 kids not, and they tracked them in parallel. And the muscle mass uh, for the kids with the hands was like, I think it was like 3x, I'd have to look up the exact number, but huge benefit in terms of physical muscle mass, which of course is important because later when they're grown up, they'll be much more able to. But even more importantly, they built the reflexes and the habits of using both hands, because otherwise you, your brain gets trained, use this hand, you don't have that hand. So when you do have the prosthetic, it, uh, it, they don't use it almost all the time. So the adoption for people at adult age without anything before that is very low, actually. Uh, just because of the mental training issue. Uh, outside the United States, 
uh, I think it's a lot broader, particularly there's, there's groups in China and India um, doing amazing stuff. Because you can get a 3D, you can get, if you have local physical resources and we're giving away all the designs, it's a few hundred dollars for uh, a printer and plastic is everywhere. So it's just commodity stuff really. And so the costs are extremely low and once you're talking about you know, India, China, Rwanda, I mean all sorts of places where the resources are very tight, it's, it makes a huge difference because $10,000 for a commercial prosthetic, not so much a, an option if the average annual income is $5,000. So um, in those parts of the world, we think there's huge opportunities. And there are some groups that have kind of self-organized in those areas. I'd say kind of the sky's the limit. I will say inside the United States, but for regulatory reasons, hands are a lot easier to work on than feet because uh, hands are regulated like tools uh, and feet are regulated like a structural uh, component of your body. And so there's legal reasons uh, that right now we're mainly focused on arms and hands in terms of our group. Uh, but there are uh, other groups kind of focusing more broadly. There's no technical reason you couldn't uh, tackle all sorts of stuff. I mean, there's, there's hands, there's partial hands, there's uh, a myoelectric. The group at University of Central Florida actually has a system with uh, electronic probes driving motors so that, for example, that Iron Man hand, uh, Alex's arm ends here. And all the rest of it is 3D printed plus some RC car parts, basically. And um, works amazingly well. I mean, you saw the motivation. He was beaming. All right, thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here.